Hi there, my name is McKay. Hello everyone, I am Sashank Shrikant. Hi, my name is Craig. Hi there, my name is Abhinav. I'm Sean and this is the proposal for our project. Machine learning for healthcare. The ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in a lot of false information being spread across the internet, especially many anti-vaccination posts. We wish to use supervised machine learning to identify these anti-vaccine messages on social media. For our project and train machine learning models such as a support vector machine and a naive base classifier to classify a tweet as anti-vaccine or not. We now talk about data collection and pre-processing. For our project, we use the AVAX tweets dataset, which consists of a lot of tweets related to anti-vaccination and general COVID-19 misinformation, and we manually annotate about a thousand of them as zero or one, anti-vax or non-anti-vax. Next up, we aim to pre-process this data so we can get robust vector representations that can easily be fed into our machine learning models. But in order to do that, we first need to clean the text of our data. For instance, if you look at this tweet on the bottom of this slide, we have a URL, we have some user mentions, both of which don't really convey any relevant information about the tweet. And so we want to be able to extract out the salient and the significant information from this tweet. In order to do that, we perform a systematic and an efficient data pre-processing pipeline. For instance, we perform word segmentation, which breaks down hashtags into its constituent words. We eliminate URLs, we stem words, that is, we bring them to its base form. So for instance, the word depopulation becomes depopul, and the, the Asian at the end is removed. We also remove stop words, which are words such as the and a, which don't really contribute much to the meaning of the sentence uh, from the perspective of a computer. After successfully pre-processing a tweet, we get something like this, this really beautiful collection of words, devoid of any stop words, no punctuation marks, and words that actually convey the meaning of the tweet. And once we have this list of words, it becomes easy for us to generate vector embeddings, which can easily be fed into our machine learning models. After data pre-processing, we still need to convert our textual data into a form that can be used by the machine learning models. In this work, we do this by generating vector representations for the tweets using word to vec In order to get a sentence embedding, we simply average out all the word embeddings in a given sentence to get a single sentence embedding. We also visualize our word embeddings by plotting the TSNE plot and we show the plot in this slide. As we can see here, the word embeddings that are similar to each other are clustered near each other and those words which are separate in meaning are clustered quite far away. We experiment with several different machine learning models. The first machine learning model that we trained on our data set is a logistic regression model and we find that the performance of this model isn't satisfactory as can be seen from the confusion matrix on the left right. The second model that we train is a support vector machine model with a polynomial kernel which performs slightly better than the logistic regression classifier. However, note that even in this case, there are a lot of misclassifications as can be seen in the confusion matrix. The third model that we tried is a multi-layer perceptron that is neural network with the set of hyperparameters given on the left. This model performs the best and has the highest accuracy compared to the previous models. We also perform a grid search based hyperparameter optimization in order to find the best hyperparameters for the neural network model. And we can see that the accuracy of our model has increased slightly from the previous model. Finally, we also experiment with a bird based method and test it out on our data set and find that the accuracy of the bird based model is the highest compared to the previous traditional machine learning models. Now that we have trained our machine learning models on the data set, it's time to analyze their performance and see how well they're doing in terms of various metrics. We first look at logistic regressions, uh, and we can see it performs okay with an accuracy of 62%, but its recall value for the anti-vax data points is very low at 0.27. We, we, we obtain similar results for the support vector machine model as well. Our two-layer MLP neural network does a lot better than the previous two, gets an accuracy of 67%, and both precision and recall are now above 60%, which shows that it, ma that it majorly is able to identify a tweet as being anti-vaccine or not. We then perform hyperparameter tuning, uh, get more robust values for our learning rate, and uh, our accuracy goes up to 69.23%. But is this the best that we can do? Well, in comes BERT. We all know BERT is one of the most popular transformer-based networks out there that is so amazing for language understanding. And it is very evident here because it significantly outperforms all the other machine learning models and is able to perform this classification task with an average accuracy of 76%. What's even cool to notice here is that both precision and recall for the anti-vax data points is now above 70%. 
So it's very safe to say that east or west, BERT is indeed the best. Once we've collected and annotated our data, we systematically pre-process this data using various NLP techniques so we can obtain these vector representations for all of them. We then feed these vector embeddings into our supervised machine learning models, and we subsequently analyze their performance using different metrics. For the unsupervised portion of our project, we're going to be looking into cardiovascular disease, also known as heart disease. One in four deaths in the United States is a result of heart disease. And so there's a lot of data out there about these diseases, including the risk factors, symptoms, etc. We're going to be looking into clustering methods on these symptoms and risk factors to see if we can break heart disease patients into more meaningful subgroups, which could be used for specialized treatments, diagnosis, etc. So for our data set, we used the heart disease data set made publicly available through the UC Irvine Machine Learning Repository. Specifically, we use a combination of several subsets which include the same 14 features. This gives us 916 total data points. Since we're interested in numerical data, we eliminated categorical features. We ended up with two datasets, one which includes some discrete features that are numerical, and one that includes only continuous variables. We then eliminated features which were missing large amounts of data, then any remaining data points which are still missing values. This method helped reduce the number of features while maximizing the number of data points we have available. Here are two samples from those datasets. Hi, this is Robert Trey Quinn, and I am going to provide an overview of the methods used for unsupervised learning. We begun preparing the dataset for clustering by applying dimensionality reduction using principal component analysis and t-stochastic neighbor embedding. The results are visualized here. Next, we applied k-means clustering to dimensionality reductions, plotted the within cluster sum of square values versus the number of clusters on a graph, and used elbow method on those graphs to attempt to determine the optimum k value for clustering purposes. The graphs are shown here. Further experimentation found the optimum k-value to be 5 for both clusters. K-means clustering was performed on the dimensionality reductions with k set to 5. The results are visualized here. After applying k-means clustering, we also applied DB scan clustering to both sets of dimensionality reductions. We selected 4 as the nearest neighbor's value since our dimensionality reductions are two-dimensional. We plotted the epsilon values versus the number of points on the graph and used elbow method on those graphs to attempt to determine the optimum epsilon values for clustering purposes. The graphs are shown here. Further experimentation found the optimum epsilon value to be 0.45 for principal component analysis and 2.5 for t-stochastic neighbor embedding. DB scan clustering was performed on the dimensionality reductions with these epsilon values as well as with the midpoints or nearest neighbor value set to 4 as previously discussed. The results are visualized here. To analyze our results, first we compared our clustering methods. To do this, we used silhouette coefficients. For both of our datasets, we found that k-means with TSNE performed the best. Next, we quantified differences between the clusters and the average in order to find characterizing features of each cluster. This involved a set of calculations which allowed us to obtain the percent fold change of the clusters. We were able to identify differences between the different clusters. For example, cluster 2 has the least severe and cluster 3 has the most severe heart disease. We also noted some oddities, such as clusters containing all the patients with non-zero fasting blood sugar level. Further, in cluster 3, we find a severe lack of cholesterol. A similar discrepancy in cholesterol is also seen in the continuous features only dataset as well. This may indicate that we missed something in our data cleaning step, or that there is some type of bias in the measurements made based on the facility you go to and what condition you're in. We could at least conclude that exercise-induced angina, or chest pain, was clustered with severe heart disease. Our work has three major takeaways. Firstly, K-means outperforms DB scan on the dataset. With silhouette coefficient of 0.57, it greatly improved on DB scan 0.34. Further, with dimensionality reduction, TSNE outperforms PCA, with a silhouette coefficient of 0.57 compared to 0.377. Finally, in terms of heart disease data, we find that individuals with poor exercise performance are at a higher risk of severe heart rate. These results are consistent with the findings of both Singh and Rajesh, as well as TWISC. This concludes our presentation on machine learning for healthcare. Thank you. Thank you.